Australia, 157 asylum seekers flown from WA to Nauru as the government continues its hardline approach. Finally allowed in, AFP investigators begin their recovery mission at the MH17 crash site. No kids? No worries. Meet the Aussies choosing to live child free and they don't regret it. How to keep your health in check without seeing a doctor. Spruce up your garden in time for spring without breaking your budget. And Anthony Collier performs one of George Michael's biggest hits live. Yes, good morning to you. We're asking you on Saturday, the 2nd of August 2014, what makes you happy? This is a song about being happy. That's right. It's the happy, happy, joy, joy song. Happy, happy, joy, joy. 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 Happy, happy, joy, joy, joy. Good morning everyone. A team of international investigators, including 40 Australian Federal Police, has begun the painstaking task of searching the MH17 crash site in Ukraine. Nine correspondent Christina Hearn joins us now from Kiev. Chris, an extremely dangerous but important mission for this team. Ashlyn, it certainly is, but to give you an idea of just how dangerous this mission is, while investigators were at the crash site, mortar fire could be heard a few kilometres away, but luckily they didn't run into any trouble and they did manage to get a safe passage to that crash site. It was also a team of investigators of 70 made up of 40 Australians. Now, that was a big improvement on yesterday where only two Australians and two Dutch investigators made it in. Basically, that was just a reconnaissance mission. Today, the real work began and they were able to do what they've come here to do and that was to recover human remains and also personal belongings. Of course, their work continues. And to give you an idea of just how painstakingly slow this process is, investigators have told me that they searched a site five metres by five metres. It took 30 investigators and it took over two hours. And that was basically all they managed to do today. In another key development as well, they have moved base from the rebel-held city of Donetsk up to Solidar, which is 90 kilometres northwest of the crash site. Now, why this is significant is that the investigators will now be going into the crash site from Ukrainian territory, so they are now confident that they will have a much uh, more safer and predictable uh, path through to the crash site. Let's have a listen to Australia's special envoy, uh, Air Chief Marshal Angus Houston, in Kiev today. I would imagine uh, that provided things stay the same uh, and we get the, the sort of good access we've had to date, uh, things should proceed very swiftly. While they've done most of the work today by hand, which is why it's been so slow, Angus Houston says as soon as tomorrow he hopes that the sniffer dogs might be able to begin their work and also specialised equipment to be brought in. That, of course, will speed up the process. They're hoping uh, in two days' time to have a full team on the ground of 100. As for how long it takes, they say they simply don't know, but at least three weeks, of course. It is slow, but essential work for those grieving families. Ashlyn? Christina Ahern in Kiev, thank you. A humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza has collapsed just hours after it began as a deadly new wave of violence erupts in the region. Both Israel and Hamas have accused each other of breaking the truce following the capture of an Israeli soldier. Addressing the media a short time ago, US President Barack Obama criticised both parties for the failed negotiations. And if we can pause the fighting, then it's possible that we may be able to arrive at a formula uh, that, uh, that, that spares lives and, and also uh, ensures uh, Israel's security. Uh, but it's difficult, uh, and I don't think we should pretend otherwise. More than 1,500 Palestinians, mostly civilians, have been killed in the 25-day conflict. A group of Tamil asylum seekers have been flown to Nauru in a secret operation overnight. The 157 asylum seekers were detained at sea on a customs ship for three weeks before being flown to Western Australia. Immigration Minister Scott Morrison confirmed the transfer, saying the group rejected an offer to be returned to India. 
The surrogate mother of a baby whose Australian parents left him in Thailand after they found he had Down syndrome has expressed disbelief that the couple could abandon their child. The 21-year-old gave birth to twins in December, but only Gammy's healthy twin sister was brought back to Australia. I feel sorry for him. I don't know what to do. I chose to have him, not to hurt him. I love him. He was in my tummy for nine months. It's like my child. I love him like my own. A local Thai newspaper is this morning reporting the six-month-old has been rushed to hospital with a lung infection. Well-wishers have so far raised more than $100,000 to help with the cost of medical treatment. And we'll have more details on the fundraising effort for Gammy throughout the morning. Two men have been charged over a violent confrontation at a service station on the New South Wales Central Coast. Emergency services were called to the Carryong business on the Pacific Highway just after 7 o'clock last night. Police allege one of the men was armed with a hammer-like object. The pair, aged 24 and 27, was taken to hospital with head injuries, then arrested. It's not yet known what sparked the fight. Victoria's mobile speed cameras are set to be replaced with new high-tech super cams that have been labelled the most effective in the world at catching speeding motorists. The current system rakes in $100 million a year, but the new state-of-the-art devices could easily double that. Laura Francis joins us now from Melbourne. Laura, when will the first of these cameras be rolled out? morning Ashlyn. Well these are the state-of-the-art cameras set to send a very strong message to motorcyclists and drivers across Victoria. Now these cameras will be able to snap drivers from the front and from the rear making them a lot more precise than the current model. These are going to have a particular impact on motorcyclists who currently are escaping fines because they don't have to have number plates on the front of their bikes. These cameras will also be able to snap drivers across eight lanes of traffic. They'll also have an infrared function that will allow clear images of speeding drivers to be taken at night. Now Ashlyn, these are set to be replaced over the next four years years, certainly making it a lot harder for speeding cyclists and drivers to escape fines. Ashlyn? Everyone's on warning. Thank you, Laura. We've been given a trip down memory lane with a series of holiday happy snaps dating back to the 1950s released to the public. The vintage photos show shots of the Queen and Prince Philip along with their young family spending time at Balmoral Castle. A younger William and Harry are also featured during the visits between the late 80s and early 90s. The Balmoral estate has been a favourite of the royal family since Queen Victoria purchased it in 1825. They're beautiful pictures and now it's over to sport with Tim. Very good morning to you, Ashlyn. The gold has continued to flow for Australia at the Commonwealth Games overnight. Teenager Eleanor Patterson won the first goal of the day with victory in the high jump. Whoop, there she goes. Not long after that, Danny Samuels claimed gold in the women's discus throw with a fairly good, wasn't it, 64.88 metres. Divers Matthew Mitchum and Dom Bedgood continued our good form in the pool with gold in the men's 10 metre platform synchronised event. And take a look at the medal tally. England, unfortunately, have pulled away from us in the gold medal category. Currently sitting with 48, our three overnight, taking it to 39 goals with a total of 123 medals. Canada are in third with 30 gold medals. Got to say a big congratulations to Sally Pearson, who under some pressure has won gold in the 100 metres hurdle at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. Wow, she doesn't run, she flies, doesn't she? To you, but while we're up here in the sunshine this morning, a lot of the country, specifically the southeast, Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia, and New South Wales, are currently shivering through a cold snap, which has brought with it some pretty crazy conditions. Very strong winds in Tasmania over the last four days that caused quite a bit of damage. But yesterday, it was actually melting. Melbourne's coldest day of the year thus far, 10.3 degrees, and with it, it brought snow to some pretty unlikely areas, including Mount Macedon and even the hills above Lawn on the Bellarine Peninsula. I haven't seen that in many, many years indeed. But we're in the Sunshine State this morning, usually pretty warm and sunny over the winter months, but for July in Brisbane, they actually had some of their coldest nights in around 14 years. So very varied conditions 
right across the country in the middle of winter. But enough of that. We are here to bring you the sunshine this morning, make you a little bit of gel, make you a bit jealous, and also show you some of paradise up here in North Queensland. So we should take a look at the weather and see what's happening at your place on this Saturday morning. If you are in Cairns, it is looking like a partly cloudy day, a top of 28 degrees. In Mount Isa and Longreach, sunny conditions, temperatures in the mid 20s, clear conditions for Bundaberg and Maryborough. And in Noosa today, there will be southerlies blowing and a top of 25 degrees. Moving into New South Wales, Grafton sunny in 19, 13 degrees and morning frost in Dubbo. Newcastle today, late showers are forecast, top of 15 degrees. Only seven in orange with morning frost and then cloud expected to clear. And in Wagga and Canberra, a bit of morning frost as well. The cloud should move away later in the day and a top of 11 degrees. We'll move into Victoria, Mildura, morning frost, a sunny day, 15 degrees. A couple of showers forecast for both Sale and Warrnambool. And in Ballarat this morning, morning frost, a sunny day, but only a top of nine for your Saturday. Moving into Tassie, Launceston, morning frost and partly cloudy, a top of 12 degrees and 10 with a couple of showers in Strawn. We'll move across the border into South Australia, Mount Gambia, afternoon showers, 13 degrees, 16 and mostly sunny for both Sajuna and Coopapiti. Moving into our West Albany, a couple of showers clearing, 19. Uh, 19 also with sunny skies for Kalgoorlie. Sunny in Karratha and Port Hedland and moving into Broome, partly cloudy conditions, but very warm, a top of 34. And moving into the Northern Territory, Yalara, sunny but cool today, a top of 19 degrees, 17 and sunny skies for the Alice. Fine conditions forecast for Catherine and partly cloudy skies are what is due if you are a Nullan boy with a top of 29 degrees. Well, we are basing ourselves on Magnetic Island this morning in Horseshoe Bay, which is one of the four main villages on the island, situated about 8 k's off the coast of Townsville, about a 20-minute ferry ride. And this is one of the delightful things that you can do in the morning here on Magnetic Island. Enjoy a beautiful champagne breakfast.